Hey, what's up guys? And welcome to part four. In today's episode, we're gonna track the bass. So last episode we went through and put our drums into uh, Reaper. Let me fix this real quick. All right, so we've got our drums in there. And this looks a little bit different than the um, layout I had in last time. This is my basic preset layout. Um, so that's why this is here, uh, why it's laid out like this. So then, so part of making the song is kind of recording it uh, in today's world at least because as you record it, you can on the spot make changes. So, you know, I've only been messing with this once a week. Uh, so, you know, I still kind of remember the bass parts, but to know them fully, I still have uh, Guitar Pro pulled up here, right, right through there. So, one of the first things we're going to do is get a basic tone to play around with, right? And that can really um, allude to what... Uh, what we're going to end up playing and sounding like. And let me make sure it's all in there. Yep. And I haven't hooked up yet. Let's do that. All right. I'll go ahead and click that off. So to get a tone, we go in here. Actually, first thing we're going to do, I've already got this pulled up, so I'll go here and do this, is tune. Right. Make sure it's kind of there. Or all the way. Perfect. So we're in drop A. Come back down here. I'm going to come down here. And you can use whatever um, effects you want to use or amp sims and stuff. Today we're going to use, uh, let's go to the TSC stuff. We'll use the BOD. And this is just something to, to, um, to record with, you know, when you send it off to, uh, especially the bass, you know, the bass, you just want something to play along with, something that sounds okay, kind of like putting a little bit of reverb on a vocalist uh, tracks when they're, so they, when they listen to themselves while they're singing, they have a little bit of something, a little bit of effect on there. So, uh, we're gonna use the bass grinder. So we're just doing this because the bass really, depending on the guitar tones, that's what the bass needs to focus on, is like, how is it feeling all that extra space there, right? But for this purposes, we'll use something here. And that sounds okay. I really didn't do anything. Maybe this is a preset I have on here. Uh, that's the build-in. Uh, then the TSC uh, program one that's built in. And what would that sound like without the? It just adds a little bit more grittiness, right? And there, you can hear a little bit of that hiss. Uh, you know, you can go in and put a noise gate, but it doesn't really matter for us here today, um, especially once we get to recording. So one way I like to do this is just close that up completely and then come up here to the uh, drums. Right, and then space it out. And I'll usually, you know, if I can play it all the way through without messing it up, I'll do it. But if it's, you know, something I can't get a transition perfectly or something like that, especially for something like this where it's not really like, I'm not going out and playing this song. I might do it in pieces, you know, intro, verse, whatever. Just depends. Um, so let's listen to the drums real quick. So basically the same thing all the way through, right? So we'll come up here, turn on the metronome. I'm gonna look, count them before recording. Two bars, yep. So it was... Uh, Uh, 
That's uh, the little riff. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get it first try. Didn't really get it the first try. But I kind of liked how I did that. I kind of just laid back, so it's only played like twice. But we'll go ahead and let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four. And this is an excessive counting. Yeah, see it? So excessive, it threw me off. Uh, so let's go up here. Counting before recording. Counting measures. Uh, one. Run the instrument really up and blah, 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 blah. Good. And just to double check, yep, it stayed there. Three, four, one, two, three, two, three, three. So in here, um, I didn't do the, uh, and I think it feels better, right? So, so now we can listen to it back and shoot fire. What I do? Nothing. That's fine. Coming in, just making sure I'm kind of off. Yeah, and then, and then that's the. And so let's go ahead and try and do that. I'll go ahead and cut this access off, right? And then, uh, so turn that back on. And we'll do some pre-roll, uh, pre-roll before recording. Uh, sure. I don't need that many. We'll just do one. And then. Lordy, lordy. So. And I think that's where it starts over. Let's go back and look real quick. So we got the verse here. And then it pauses. Yeah, okay, okay. So let's do that one more time. We'll go ahead and cut that out. Not the whole thing. Go back up here, exit. Yeah, just this. did mess up right there at the end right right here um, sometimes I would go in and just cut that out and and do it again however that's such an easy part uh, let's just do it all over again for continuity looking at it I accidentally cut that out so you want to make sure you're not doing any weird stuff and it looks weird already what happened here something happened here and it's not correct let me just back it up when did that happen okay yeah see I, for some reason I accidentally hit that all right last time Let's go ahead and listen, or do it again. And mess 
it up one more time. And some of these are happy accidents. That's why I'm kind of showing tracking the bass because I was just gonna just do some dead notes for those opens. And then also I'm holding that one note out. I think it sounds good. Uh, we might have to go back and redo some things later after we track the guitars. Um, but let's go ahead and get this over with, all right? So let's track this one more time. And then that's when the uh, chorus comes in, right? So I think that's a good track there. Um, and one reason I, I like looking at the kick drum and the snare, right? So that's the kick and that's the snare. I like looking at that to kind of keep me on point here. Yeah. And I'm into that. I'm into that. So let's double check what the choruses here. I kind of remember it, um, but just to double, just to go over it again. I think that's it right there. We'll go ahead and play it. Let me turn that down. back into the verse. All right, so let's go ahead and get that down. Yeah, gotta get that feel for it. Yeah, I'm coming in too late on that second note. And we'll just cut that out, dead space there, cut out. Boom, second, uh, we got the second verse, right? So what I'll, we'll do here, come over there, um, we'll take this and we'll just glue that on up. And I think, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So this second verse is a little different. So I would just normally like take this and put it over here but it's not the same thing at the end because it's just, and then it goes back into the chorus. So we'll go ahead and record this part. Uh, I'm playing it a little bit weird there too. Okay, okay. Let's do this right. That is that is definitely different. Oh, that's why. Okay, so this is another important thing to show, right? So I'm kind of treating this part right here uh, as the pre-verse, and uh, I didn't throw it in there. So I'm holding this note out there, but I really, I need to hold it out to, to um, here. So I'll come through here, and I'm just gonna change it like that. And now I'm gonna come back unfortunately and do it again um so this is probably getting a little bit boring watching me track this so i'll go ahead and uh get it all done uh, i'll come back to you after i've tracked everything and i'll talk about it a little bit more on some creative ideas and stuff right after you've tracked everything okay guys so i wanted to show you here the i ended up playing the bridge a little different So 
So it's. Originally, though, it was. Uh, and I'll show you real quick. This is what it originally was. Let me go to the bridge. And I'll turn it down just a smidge. But when I started playing it, I just played it a, a, the way I did it there. And it just, I think it just sounds good. So now we have the bass completely tracked. Uh, so let's go through and listen to this real fast. And one thing I will do is come up here, go to copy, uh, copy, and see this guy, that's not what we're doing there, boom. And then we'll come up here and we'll paste it. And although, let me just switch these around. So we'll take this, we'll put it down here. Now what we did there was there, and I want to take this off. So now we have a DI track and a dirt track. So we'll go ahead and let me turn the metronome off. this out so sometimes I'll come in here and add you know compression EQ something on the DI track um, but I just want to make sure but when you're doing this especially for bass you want to make sure that you have good clean recordings I could probably go through and clean this up which I probably will do because I think this is a song that I want to put on uh, my EP so uh, that's basically it when it comes to recording, you know, don't be afraid to change things on the spot. You know, we changed the intro here. And we changed, um, a little something on the bridge. Part of the creativity that comes with this, you know, we talked about drums and stuff. So let's say we came through and, you know, right dab smack in the middle, I think is uh, right here. So we could come in here, uh, splice that. And on the second half here, open this up and we're using the China and the Crash, right? So what we could do is say, um, Let's add, let's take this to the, let's take, no, it's on the rod, yeah. And then we'll take this crash and let's add it on the splash there, yeah. And then let's not, let's also go ahead and add, and this will just speed it up a little bit, really. Um, and we'll just see how this sounds. You know, don't be afraid to change things, uh, you know, while you're recording at home or with your friends and your buddies, uh, your bandmates, because um, everything can be changed until you're ready to go to the studio or the real studio, because you don't want to be in there and then messing around and changing parts then. That's not the time to do it. Um, so right here, this last bar, I'm actually gonna take this and let's move it down, uh, you know, nothing crazy. Let's just move it down to these toms here. And this is on that tom. 
yeah. Um, just to just to have something here, uh, and like this kick, these kicks. Let's go ahead and I'll take this one out. Okay, well, I want to have have it where it was, and there was one right there, All right? So we have that there, and then this, uh, we'll take this one out, and we'll move it up here. Yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and listen to this part real quick. Um, so we'll just start it from here. that's good you know maybe after the drums comes in or the uh, guitars will change some stuff up on the drums again maybe um, you know drums can really play a huge role in the feeling of the song it could be the bass and the guitars could be playing the same exact part for a whole, you know three minutes but if the drums come in and the drums play three you know three different parts and you say you have part one, part two, and part three. Say you do part one, part two, part one, part three, uh, part one, and then part two again. It can feel like a whole complete song. Um, but anyways, guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. Uh, part four, uh, part five, we'll be tracking the guitars. Um, I was hoping to have my guitar fixed up a little bit before we did this, but it's okay. Um, it'll get the job done, and then when it is fixed up, I'll come through and re-record everything. Farewell.